So today, just after Chelsea, we're going to have a look at Paulonia trees. Commonly they're known as the foxglove tree and this one was planted only in 2010. So it's 13 years old. You can see that it tried to become a multi-stemmed tree. You can see how it splits out and you can see the remarkable suckers, that's all last year's growth, 10 or 12 feet. So it's a small tree, it's a small multi-stem tree, but just look at it now that it's in flower. A foxglove tree indeed, and Paulonia kawakamii has these pale, pale whitish flowers, pale bluish in bud, opening out into uh, a full full frontal foxglove with an imitation of an insect uh, to encourage pollination. Some, are, some of the flowers are a little darker than others. Uh, the flower spikes are a good foot long, sometimes 18 inches long, and the leaves are still coming. The leaves will get much larger than this but just look at the look at the color up against the blue sky today look at the standout plant that this is now in the wild Paulonia kawakamii is thought to be limited to about a hundred trees still growing in the wild however it's rather commoner in botanic gardens and because it is easy enough to grow from seed there are quite a number of nurseries in the UK besides burn coos that, that can supply this and it's generally thought that Paulonia kawakamii is one of the tougher uh, of the Paulonias and less susceptible to frost. We're going to have a look at a few other species of Paulonia today but supposing we'd been able to cut a branch of this remarkable tree and take it to Chelsea wouldn't it have stolen the show? Unfortunately, something which requires quite as much water as this Paulonia does, it won't cut and last in water, so it would be impossible to take a cut spray to Chelsea. But as we look up again at this, absolutely fantastic. Wouldn't that have be, been captivating as a large tree at Chelsea? Wow. So here we've got another uh, form of Paulonia or another foxglove tree. And this is Paulonia tomentosa lilacina. And we can only see the flowers high up. We can't see them close to. So, but you can just make out the mauve um, buds, which are opening to a paler mauve and then fading to white. You can see there are plenty more buds still to come out. Uh, the twigs with the buds on them are more like three feet long in some instances and the flowers have been out quite a while before the leaves have started to show up. This uh, Paulonia is peculiar in that in a mild autumn we often see a few flowers coming out as a pale blue uh, in the autumn and quite why it does that I don't know but it doesn't seem to affect its uh, early summer flowering which is as copious and voluminous as you'd expect on a Paulonia. But there's another difference too which this species has which we can see when we look at the trunk itself. So this is very much a single stem tree unlike Paulonia kawakamii where we had multiple stems. Um, the plant was getting so enormous we've cut off a few lower branches which has immediately caused it to put out some side shoots but we don't want those we want the energy going into the top of the plant. Um, they're short-lived trees as we've discovered maybe 30 or 40 years um, and hopefully by taking off some of these lower branches we'll prolong the life of the best bit which you can see for half a mile away when you look up in the garden from down by the beach today. 
So, so there are, in all, there are six species of Paulonia, but the one which is best known is Paulonia tomentosa. And people always say about Paulonias that you should plant them where you can actually look down on them. And we tried to do that with this Paulonia tomentosa uh, probably 50 years ago by planting it in the bottom of a quarry. And you can see now that we can actually see these blue flowers and how much darker a blue they were than on Paulonia tomentosa lilacina, which we looked at a minute ago. However, uh, you also see the problems with Paulonias in that they do split out if you grow them in a windy position because the leaves are so enormous that towards the autumn, if you get a good gale, you can split out some of the main leading branches as you see here. And there's also another problem with Paulonias in that if they come into leaf um, and come into flower and then you get a nasty late frost, um, a Paulonia has a, a stem which is virtually hollow. If you, if you give it a knock, um, it sounds hollow in the winter. But when the uh, xylem and phloem is, is flowing up the stem and the leaves are coming and the flowers are, are showing, um, it's a bit like getting frost on a frozen downpipe. You get a bit of a, a burst and some of the holes that you see in the trunk um, and some of the dieback which you see in the crown is probably due to late frosts over the years. So you couldn't really describe this as a pretty tree um, in its form, format that we're looking at here. Uh, yes, we're looking down on it, um, but no, it's in a bit too exposed a position. Paulenia tomentosa is a, is a straight upright tree that forms a good crown normally, and although this one hasn't here, uh, in many other gardens you, you'll find it growing well. Paulinia tomentosa likes a hot, dry position, but where its roots get a certain amount of water, uh, as they do in this quarry here. We're going to finish off with just one other Paulonia, and it's unfortunately over already in the garden, so all we can show you is a picture of Paulonia fortunii, which I took about a month earlier, and which shows a white flower with a very bee-like centre. I hope you've enjoyed a little look at Paulonia's.